Right. So I'm going to be working on doing something. Um, I don't know, you know, if anybody ever cares about this type of thing or not. It's something kind of dumb. But it is kind of fun to see how these things are done. And from what I can tell, most people don't really know how to get this done just right. Um, so I'm going to be doing is I'm fixing up a pair of my headphones. And this headphones my daughter chewed on because she's ridiculous. Um, and destroyed. We already got a new set, um, but I wanted to repair these and see if I actually could pull it off. Um, so I've been kind of looking through it and figuring it out and doing some different things. Um, there's a lot of cool little things inside of here um, that you're going to see. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I'm audible. I, I can't really 100% tell with this. Um, I mean, it looks basically like I am, so, yeah, fuck it, whatever. We'll figure it out later. Um, so I actually started already a little bit. Um, you can probably see it a little bit here. Woo! All right. Got a lot of light on here and stuff because it's hard to see sometimes in the garage. Um, but you can see I've actually already got um, a little bit of this soldered, or this one piece soldered here. This is actually the, the left audio. Um, so first let me kind of get into what exactly i'm doing here um i'll hold that there so, so what we have here we've got um what's called a four pole uh a four pole 3.5 millimeter audio jack um so this, this is pretty standard actually uh generally when you look at these types of things you're gonna see a couple different versions um so this is the one that got chewed off and everything um, and you can tell how many poles it has by how many little uh, bands you've got so if you look there's little plastic bands and those indicate each individual like connection um, so this is actually a four connection so um, you have the uh, you have the tip right here so this is your tip um, which is actually just called tip so this is actually called TRRS or tip ring ring and sleeve um, so there's four different connections, which is why I call it four pole, um, because it's got four different pieces. So the tip is the one right here. Then you have the one below that is ring one. The next one below is ring two. And then the outside is called the sleeve. Um, and there's different wiring configurations and different things. Um, some different, uh, some different, uh, applications, um, you know, like, Older iPhones, um, there's there's some older applications and stuff that use a, a old form of wiring it, um, in which case uh, um, it's always going to be about the same. Um, the only difference, especially in a four pole, is uh, is where your ground and your microphone are actually connected. Um, and we'll get into that here in a few minutes, um, what, the, what that difference actually is. Um, but... Basically, the first two connections are always going to be the same. It's going to be your left and right channel audio. Um, your left channel audio is always going to be this blue one, um, which took me a little bit to, because um, I am colorblind, so figuring this stuff out can sometimes be a pain in the ass. Um, but I was able to determine that this is definitely my uh, my left channel audio. Um, so that one actually goes to what's called to the tip. So that actually connects to this first one. Now, it's hard to kind of tell um, which one is connected to where um, on the inside here, but what you kind of have to look at is where um, each piece is. So the tip um, on these little pieces, and I'm going to grab one that's not been utilized yet, um, the tip is actually connected. Um, you, you can see like it's almost like, like a little pin in the front here. Um, so the one that's connected there is always connected to your tip. Um, the next one is going to be your ring one, um, which is going to be the higher of the two ring sets that you see here. So there's a little bit of plastic down here. And if you look really, really closely, I don't know if it, it's going to look quite right in the light here. But um, if you look really, really closely, you can actually see where it'll be connected. Um, and that's actually going to go to your ring one. Um, ring two is the next one below that. And then obviously this is your shielding. Um, or your, uh, yeah, your shielding or your, your basically the, the outside. Um, and this is actually where we're going to be connecting up uh, 
so this is where we'll actually be connecting up the microphone. Um, in, in older applications, it was uh, that this is the shielding is actually where you connected up the ground. I don't know really why they changed that up. Um, I would think that you would want the shielding to be grounded, but apparently that is not the case. I guess, I guess it kind of makes a little bit of sense because um, if, uh, if, it's if it's using it the way I think it is, where it's going... Um, where that return channel is and the difference in the voltage between the two is, you know, between the return channel and the forward channel is what it, uh, what plays through your audio, then I guess it does kind of make sense that it would not want to be the shielding, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, so we obviously have this, this blue wire and it's connected up already. I actually already heat shrank as well. Um, you definitely want to put some heat shrink around there because you're going to have a lot of little wires all connected up and in weird positions. So it's not a smart idea to not have it connect, not have it shielded, which is what I actually had it before I actually did this. This is why I started doing the video because I was like, well, you know, I, I figured it out and it took me a few hours to do that, but I did figure it out. And so if that's the case, I might as well have it look pretty nice. Okay. So the next piece that I'm looking for here, um, so I've got right audio, which is, I think this is supposed to be red. Um, and this is, I believe, red black, um, if that's correct, which again, I, I'm colorblind, so I, I can't 100% tell. The best way I was able to determine this is actually knowing where the third pole is, which is right here. Um, I would actually just, what I did is I, uh, I connected up the headset and, uh, you know, put on some audio and then uh, touched different wires to the third pole. And so I made sure which one was actually my ground. Um, and I figured out that this is actually my ground here. Um, so this is actually going to be what we connect up to the third pole. Um, so that would make this one the second pole. And then these two that are together are actually your microphone and microphone return um, or microphone ground. So the microphone ground, I actually had this wired backwards. This is also why I had to redo this. Um, I had this wired backwards because microphone and microphone grounds, I would think that the microphone would be on the white wire and the microphone ground would be the copper wire here, the bare copper. And it is actually backwards of that. Um, it is actually that the, the, this needs to be grounded here. This white wire is part of the ground. And then this, it needs to actually go to the mic or go uh, to the, uh, the shielding or the casing part. So I had to redo that anyway. Again, you know, trial and error a little bit. Um, you know, you can, that's a that's kind of the fun thing about these little things is that like already if it's already broken you're already going to be like not doing anything with it you might as well have some fun um break some stuff a little bit more um at very worst but at best you might actually fix it which is uh you know the the hope here um i actually ordered the wrong ones before so i wanted to show these off too um i actually ordered the wrong um solderable pieces and you can get these on amazon they're like seven bucks um for a pack of four of these um but i actually ordered the wrong one so always make sure you order the right ones um i ordered the three pole which you can tell again you got the front the top here the tip the ring and the shielding that is obviously a problem because uh this is four wires actually it's five wires but remember two of them are ground um so um the other four are or the other three are what we actually cared about but this would have been completely incorrect. Um, I mean, not completely. I could I could just uh, remove the microphone part um, and just leave that off and just never use the microphone again, which is always a possibility. Um, but I, I wanted to actually repair this correctly. So I ordered another set. Um, you can get them on Prime. They're pretty cheap, actually. Um, you can probably get them in electronics shops and stuff like that, too, if you really look around. But... I'm lazy, um, and I don't like to leave my house if I can avoid that, um, because I'm an introvert. So that's what I do. All right. The last little bit here is to actually like look at the, like the soldering. So you, I don't know if you can actually see it. Yeah, you can. It says 404 on there. That's 404 degrees Celsius because I got it set to Celsius and everything. It's a pretty uh, it's pretty standard for um, most solders to actually like uh, to actually fall or to melt. So it's always nice. This one actually has a sleep mode on it as well. So if it was sleeping, it's the SLP, which it might actually go to sleep here in just like a few seconds if I don't start doing things with it. But um, which reminds me, I need to put some water on this. Um,
always have a bit of water for your sponge to um, cool off your your tip a little bit and uh, clean it because um, that's that happens a lot um, with mine also it has this little uh, this awesome little thing here where it's a nice little place for me to clean my tip it's got a little bit of copper inside here for me like copper like steel wool type thing um, it's got some resin in the bottom too so I can get some of the resin on there um, to actually clean the tip make it all nice and purdy again um, you always want to make sure your soldering tip is nice and clean, especially uh, especially if you're working with uh, different types of wires. Um, sometimes the wires will get uh, a lot of stuff on them, um, and especially these types. These types are actually, uh, so this is one of the wires. Um, these types are actually called lacquered wires, so there's just like a, a weird like lacquer layer on top of there. Um, getting that off is always a pain too, um, because like the copper that's inside there is very, very thin. Um, and I'm going to show it real quick. Um, so the, the most efficient way of doing this is actually just to catch it on fire. <laughs> um, you know, obviously make sure you have water and a good fire extinguisher nearby, but you can actually see how like small that wire is, um, that's underneath there. Now, don't worry, that fire is not enough to even really like cause any pain or anything. Um, but you can see that it, it creates just that little bit, um, a little bit of shiny metal on there, uh, which is what you want. Um, and then the next best thing to do would be to what's called tin it. Um, and that'd be when you're basically just, uh, taking some of your solder and heating up the two pieces together. Um, and that way, uh, the solder gets basically kind of set into the, the, uh, the wire itself. Um, it might do it. It might not. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain. Um, to be honest, I know some people like to do it that way and make it, you know, a little bit easier on themselves. But these these uh, connectors are actually kind of easy to work with because they just have holes through them. So all you have to do is really just make sure the bare copper can get through. Once you get the bare copper through um, and you heat on the back side of it, you're going to be able to just melt the solder right into it. And it's going to make a really nice connection. So it's actually not all that important but it is nice to know that you can actually like tin those as well um and th it does make it a little easier if you were just to have to like connect on to it like a bare uh a, a bare uh, trs uh four pole um so i'm gonna go ahead and get started with this stuff um kind of get into this so again i'm gonna be heat shrinking but the first thing i want to do i want to get the ground actually set um, or no, I don't want to get the ground set because the ground is going to go together with this. So I'm actually going to hold off on that. I'm going to do the, uh, the right channel audio here, the red one. What, what I assume is red. Um, let me find the little heat tubings because I got them around here. Huh, they're right here. You don't need a whole lot of heat tubing for this. So I usually just kind of like trim it back. Um, cause there's really no reason to use it up way too much of it. It doesn't really change anything. It might make it a little, you know, a little bit more resilient against things like, uh, the moisture getting in and stuff like that, but that's not really all that much of a, much of a problem if you're not like taking stuff outside. So let me go ahead and get this on here. There we go. Except I forgot to cut it. Of course I did. That's all right. There. We go. Perfect. So now I have this down through here. And it just sits on there and we just wait. So next we're going to make sure that we've actually got this on the correct one. Um, so this one is actually going to be our second ring. Um, or sorry, first ring. So this is our one. Um, and we can see it's right there. So I like to come in. Usually I like to come in from the inside to the out. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier. It's, um, I know some people like different or have different uh, methodologies that they do for it, but it's just what I do. So I've actually got a lot of solder on here on the outside just from my previous like work on here. So I'm just opening up the hole a little bit so I can get the wire through. Ah, I have a magnetic goose over here and it grabbed at my stuff. Okay. So again, I'm just grabbing the bare copper through here. 
and we just need to get it just at the right angles and stuff. Always best to just kind of take your time with it because there's really not a rush. Um, if you have to rush to do it, then you're probably not going to do a very good job. So um, if it's something that needs to be rushed, you probably shouldn't do it. Especially if you're not used to it. Um, clean this off. Try not to burn myself as well. That would be the best. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pick this up here. I'm going to try to get it in just the right angle. And I can pull things through. Cool. All right. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to move this all out of the way. And we're going to come through. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess this is going to be in my hands then to do it. Yeah, it's still got a lot on there. I'm taking my time. Okay. I know I have a solder like cleaning wick somewhere. I don't remember where I put it though. So I'm kind of freehanding this a little bit. Soldering tip off. Make sure I'm not gonna accidentally like burn my wires. Make for an excellent video, but not all that, you know, informative in any way. All right, set this down again. Come through here. Wire. <sighs> Pain in the ass. Okay. Hey, I appreciate it. I really do. I'm just kind of here just doing my thing, so. Resoldering pieces, so. But anyway, um, and I'm sorry, it's it's hard for me to be able to like look and see what all anybody's typing or if anybody types or anything. So I do apologize. I'm not trying to like per like purposely ignore you or anything like that. It just I do want to be careful because a this is hot um, and hot things tend to burn people and burns tend to be painful. Um, so all that being put together, you know, I, I try to be a little bit careful, um, especially because like family get mad at me if I'm burning myself out here. Oh, well, my family, my kids would. My kids would be, especially my daughter. She would probably be a little bit more uh, concerned with me. Oh, 
Aha. Let's see. Unfortunately, the hole here closed up, so I'm trying to reopen it. Aha! I think I got it. Yep, I got it. Awesome. I'll try to get this tin off of the back side here. Back to the actual good stuff. So now we're going to actually pull this through again. Try to get it nice and solid. All right, why are think thin thoughts? <sighs> you didn't think thin thoughts enough. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. I'm gonna try to coax you through. Ooh, ah, oh, god damn it! still there. It's you that I need to connect. Let's set this down for a second. This is what like makes a little bit frustrating sometimes. But frustration is kind of a big part of any electronics, DIYs, anything that you do, you're going to be frustrated. Um, it's, it's all just a big puzzle to be solved. Um, getting it done right can sometimes take a lot of time and takes a lot of patience, um, which not everyone has the ability to do that. But if you do, there's a lot of awesome opportunities involved. Um, not a lot of people can pull this type of stuff off anymore there we go yeah there we go okay we're gonna close this off a little bit ha okay so now we're gonna get all the stuff away from here so <laughs> well and I don't solder everything together we can pull that off I believe in us all right we got it okay it's not the angle that I want it to be at So I want to use gravity to pull the solder down and in as well. So between heat, gravity, and capillary action, you want it to pull. Oh shoot! I didn't do it this way. All right. That's also why you need to make sure that your tip is clean. Because if your tip is not clean, it will not get to the correct temperature. And then your stuff just won't like solder correctly. 
You also get weird beating and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like for right now, and it's not currently softening correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean my soldering iron. Ah. Sure. But it should be good. Okay. Awesome. All right. Good solid connection there. Holding together. We're gonna move this back. There we go. So now we push the heat shrink all the way forward because we want that heat shrink to go over our entire soldered component here, our entire connection. Because that is going to protect it from the other pieces which are all going to try to connect with it because that's what connections do. And that's what electronics do. Just want to connect. Okay. So we're going to hold this here. We're going to pull these wires back. And you don't want to do too much heat because as you already know, the lacquer comes off pretty quick. So you just want a little bit of heat. Don't catch it on fire. There we go. And so now the heat shrink has shrank around there. Now we've got a nice solder connection that's underneath there. All right. Two down. Now the third one I'm going to do is going to be the casing actually, because I'm going to do two of them for the last one here, which is our ground. So for this one here, I'm going to be doing two pieces at once. Oh, let me stretch my back for a second. I'm old. Oh. Oh. Okay. So. Again, this is going to be on the back side here. And this one is going to be utilizing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to do these two. I'm going to do this, these two next. Um, because I forgot that this is actually kind of like bare copper and I don't really want to do that, um, until the very end. Um, so I'm going to do these two and I'm going to push them together. Use this use a piece of heat shrink to kind of connect them together here. Okay. So this one is actually going on the, uh, this is ring two. So we find a little ring two piece here. So that's this one here. And it's actually got a big bubble of uh, solder already on it. Um, so it's going to make it hopefully a little easier than my other ones. But that being said, I just saw how much fun it was to try to get the stuff off last one. So I have a feeling I may have made a slight miscalculation. Uh, hold up. Okay. 
Well, give me a second. I'm going to turn off my thing here so I don't actually burn myself as I reseat my soldering iron because for whatever reason it came loose. So, that being said, we don't want to cause ourselves some burns while I mess with this. Um, it'll only take a few seconds anyway. Yep, see, it's very hot. I shouldn't touch it. Um, actually, I've got literally pliers like right here. I don't know why I'm being so skittish about this. It's way easier to just grab a pair of pliers they have sitting at my workbench. All right, back to on. Heat up. We're gonna go ahead and clean this tip off again. Okay. Tip's cleaned up. Let's go ahead and desolder this. I'm gonna take a scratch all here. That's just what I've been using to, because it's got a nice sharp tip on it. Um, just a poke through. I'm going to pull this back. Perfect. <sighs> Clean. Okay. So again, same procedure. Coming from the inside to the out. Coming right through that hole that I just reopened. Um, this time we're going to try to get two wires through there, which is not always the easiest. But if we can pull that off to make the ground nice and solid, and we can get this in one masterful stroke it would be a lot better but two wires two sets of copper is always a little bit more difficult than one <sighs> right let's rip this out at this angle here I pulled one through. Did I pull the other? I didn't. Damn it. Where's my needle nose? pliers. And I got some of these over here, but I don't think it's going to be able to pull it. I'm not going to have enough finesse on it either. No. Hmm. All right. That's fine. I was kind of forced it through. Sometimes if you do it just right, you can get it through. Got it. Perfect. Nailed it. Ha ha. Awesome. Let me change this angle a little bit. I got them both inside there. Nice. It takes a lot less effort if you can get it just right. Okay. So, let me be 
warming this up. Make it a little toasty. Again, heat from the bottom side here and just kind of push the solder in. <sighs> Should solder it nice and nice and snug inside there. Perfect. That was, that was surgical right there. All right. Next, time to seal this thing in. Actually, before I do that, I'm actually going to do one last little thing because I want to test it to make sure that this actually connected correctly. Because if it didn't, then the ground, if the ground doesn't work correctly, it's not going not gonna to be able to hear anything from it. Um, because you, you need the ground. <laughs> it's just part of the fun. We're going to connect this up. Yeah, that's fine. If you can hear it, it's actually pumping out. Um, the reason why it took me an extra few seconds there is because my uh, one of my channels, my audio, this channel, this right channel audio, did not come through at first um, until I got it to this angle here. Um, I'm hoping it's not like disconnecting a little bit. Um, it might be, but. That's something I can work with here real quick. It should be all right though. I think I got it like reset. reset. So let's go ahead and get this over top of this. Yeah, we're just taking our lighter real quick, warming up the heat shrink. Just warming up the heat shrink. <sighs> Nothing crazy. <sighs> Warm up the heat shrink. <sighs> I know there's like heat guns you can get and everything, but I've got a lighter, and the lighter works just as well, weirdly enough. Maybe a little less uh, elegant, but if it gets the job done, it gets the job done. All right, so this final piece here is going to take a larger piece because it's the casing. Um, this is the microphone part. So it's actually going to take like a whole piece here to connect it. A whole big piece of heat shrink. Um, yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna change this angle here a little bit. Gonna pull this through.
Okay, got it. So it pulls through. And again, this is just our microphone here. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna change the angle here again. Because again, we were gonna want to pull the solder down through the hole. It's gonna make it a little bit better. Did I, did the heat shrink fall off? Yeah, it did. That, okay, well, that was irritating. So now, all that work I did is all for naught. To do it again. Do it again. It's all right though. It's entertaining, it's fun. Actually, this is a really long piece of heat tube. That being said, I almost want like that whole piece to, and this whole piece here to go through it. So I wanted this to be the outside for the like exterior part of the wires. I, I probably should have done one you got to be kidding me. Please tell me I didn't just fuck everything up. Uh, okay, I think we're good. Also a good reason why you want to make sure everything's soldered nicely. Because eventually you're going to drop it. Especially if you're a klutz like me. Okay. You know, I don't think I need to put a heat shrink on this one, to be honest, because I want all the pieces to almost sit like right on the inside of this in order to make sure that they're not getting anywhere weird. Um, like if I had a, another piece of heat shrink on the inside there, it would be fine, but I don't, I didn't put one like that binds all the wires together. Um, if this whole thing fails, then the, uh, the next iteration the next attempt at this would be uh with that extra piece of heat shrink on the in the front of everything but for this for this first well for the second iteration i guess this first taped iteration we're just not going to worry about it it's not going to be a make or break moment here especially considering this is really only just like the casing and the outside um, this is just the microphone. So, getting it to work perfectly is not necessarily the worst, or the biggest, like, concern here. Left and right channel audio and the ground was, like, kind of my biggest thing. Um, you know, microphones you can get kind of whatever, but... Your headphones you kind of need working correctly. Oh, God. I'm gonna try to come from this angle here. Try to get it down in. Okay. Angle here. I come underneath. Get it to bind up properly. There we go. <sighs> Got it. All right. Okay, let's make sure I didn't fuck up the wires. I easily could have while I was doing that. Eh, did not. Awesome. Alright, I'm going to cut off this excess here, because I don't really want the excess copper. Okay. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. This should all be able to connect up and get on the inside of this harness here. Haha. 
All right. Let's go test it. Test, test, double test, triple test. Always test. Lots of tests. I've always got hundreds of tests. All right, testing the microphone, testing the microphone, testing microphone, testing microphone, testing microphone, testing microphone, testing microphone. Okay, it still doesn't see it. Testing the microphone. Hello, 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 test, 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 I can see my own stuff, oh, okay, there we go, I think it just needs extra, I think it just needs a little bit more work on that, but it may just need amplified properly, everything else works okay, the only problem is my right channel, so my right channel is not kind of quite right, um, it keeps dropping, um, so we're going to need to repair that real quick before we complete the project here. So this is our right channel, a red one. So we're going to pull this heat shrink back off. This is the one I was having problems with earlier anyway. Um, so I'm not really all that surprised. I'm going to try to get this heat shrink off of here. <sighs> it might just be better. Hmm. All right. I'm going to try to burn it off real quick. It might work. It might not. It might backfire horrifically. Hopefully it doesn't. This is definitely hot. I mean, I did just put a fire onto it, so I guess that's probably to be expected. Ugh. Never claimed to be an intelligent person. I did join the army twice. Well, I guess I signed the papers twice. Joined it once. Just re-upped. Okay. I'm going to try to take the solder off of here as well. Use some heat to cut through it all. Aha. I get it somewhere now. We're just going to redo this wire. <clears throat> Got myself. It's only 400 degrees Celsius. It's fine. Probably won't. Probably won't cause any problems, right? It's only four times boiling water. Come on. There we go. There you go. That's what we want. Wanted you off. Okay. First of all, I don't like crossing my cables. All right. So. Fix this up. <sighs> Let me think. Um, I got a couple ways I could possibly do it just to kind of clean this up. Um, one way is just going to be using heat and my scratch all again, um, just to kind of remove as much as I can. There we go. Okay. Thank you.
out. I got a lot of excess here. I can actually just cut it. Let me just cut it like here. Pull this part off. There we go. Don't try that at home. Even though I totally just did it at home. I'm gonna burn this off. Got it. Nice spare copper. And now we'll put it through. Try this again. Oh, uh, before I do that, let's grab heat shrink. I'm really hoping that this will actually like fix it because there is the possibility that this this end has been damaged, in which case I, I got to redo the whole end. Um, but if it's not the end, if it was just that connection was just not great, just due to um, a couple different like issues, mainly my own incompetence. Um, like that's fine. We can we can work through my incompetence, um, but replacing the whole thing is just a pain in the ass because that means I have to redo all those solder connections. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need to clean this. Huh. Missed it. Okay, try again. Oh, well, maybe I didn't. Looks like I got it. Hold up. Let me see. Did I actually connect it? I think I did. Oh, no, it's definitely not connected. Well, wait, hold on. Maybe it is. Yeah, I think it's connected. We're going to fold it back on itself. Make sure it kind of sticks together. God bless it. Um, Because if I can get this just right. Yeah, I think that's... That looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I don't see anything that's like glaringly bad. Let's cut off Got this little bit of excess here. So we don't need it. Oh, I cut it a little bit too much. That's all right. We're gonna be careful with it though. Be careful. So this time we're going to. Gentle with our flame. Ha. Okay, let's see. Test, test, test. As always, too many tests. So many tests. You gotta make sure you get it right. All right, test, test, test. Awesome. All right, that worked. So we're going to pull 
pull this sleeve back over here. I'm going to close this off. Then we're going to pull this last bit of heat shrink over. Nah. All right, that's fine. It's, it just needs to be close. I think that'll work. I just don't want to put too much pressure on it either. These are still kind of freshly soldered. I mean, they should be cool enough that they like they won't let go, but you don't know. <sighs> Why don't you know about the heat shrink tubing being just slightly larger than the thing? <sighs> okay. Take it nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. We're gonna pull this down and in. Mm, so close. That's what I want. So don't want to burn my wires it would be so tragic that i did all of that and made it like work and the wires get burned oh it would totally be on brand but oh. Awesome. I'm gonna pull. Well, we're gonna come over here. So we've got this connected. Actually, see, we got stuff on. This is uh, me talking. This is what I was saying, where it's like it's not at the right uh, volume. So it's gonna take a little bit of like configuration within the computer to properly do that. Um, bring this piece over here. They can see it's actually pushing through. Beautiful. Got two channel audio out of it. It's actually working correctly. We're able to get both uh, our, our microphone working. We got everything up and running. Um, I'm probably gonna end up testing out uh, Discord and stuff, seeing if, uh, see if the audio on that needs to be like adjusted in some way. But that's how it's done. Um, that is the, the entirety of, um, and these are just JBL. I mean, these are, these are kind of, you know, stuff you can find almost anywhere, but almost all headphones are gonna work kind of in the same, in the same way. Um, apparently that's just kind of a four or four audio or four, uh, um, four layer. Um, I actually have, hold on. I actually have one more. I want to kind of pull it apart and see if it does, if it's the same way. Um, because if it is, then I'll be able to repair that one too. Um, okay. Yeah. These are actually razor headphones. So I'm a little less, uh, a little less confident on these ones just because I think that these actually have a lot more channels of audio. Also, it has this little, uh, this little piece here. Again, as you can see, my daughter is, uh, ridiculous. Um, is probably, um, secretly, um, a dog, but I'm not a hundred percent sure of that. Um, she, she chewed so many of my wires. It, it, it's made me actually pretty upset with that, but what are you going to do? She's cute. I can't, I can't get rid of her. 
So this is actually interesting. So we got actually more wiring here than I thought. Well, yeah, there's a lot more wires. Look at this. So this is a copper one. Um, it looks like there's an interior wire inside here. So let's see. I'm kind of curious now. Yeah, so there's a there's some type of filler. Oh, yeah, that's an interior wire. So there's the light wire, um, which is, th so this is going to be your microphone. Again, copper wire is probably going to be the uh, external part of it, um, or the, the microphone part, and then this is going to be the return channel. Um, so it's going to be the ground part there. Um, same, same concept, though. Um, got similar wires here. Um, whenever you see these little, like, like white things, it's just filler. Not really filler, it's it's strengthening, um, but yeah, filler. Um, let's see what else we got. I don't know if this is a complex one, actually. I thought this would be a lot more complex than it, it feels like it is. Um, I don't think I could actually like use this in any way because the, the cord is basically destroyed down to like <laughs> where it'd be almost useless um, as far as like a, a headset is concerned, but at least it's interesting to look at um, Just to just to show that like Headset wiring is not All that different across the different things um, The the biggest thing is going to be like the the materials used and the uh, stuff like that um, yeah, so I just pulled this apart again. Um, a lot of this actually came out of the, the little piece here. Um, I'm going to take that apart here soon just to see what it looks like. Okay. So let's see. So you can see a cross section, a little bit of this cable. Um, Let me take this off because I don't need it. Um, you got the the you got red. You've got looks like a blue right here. Um, yeah, this is just four wires. Oh no, it's got an extra one here. So it's got a little yellow one here. I'm not really sure what that would go to. Um, actually, this is, this is not. So we got one, two. We've got the white one in intertwined in here, and we got this yellow. So we've got th we got four. So this is just a, a simple four pole as well um, that created this, which is again kind of interesting. Um, I'm gonna guess that there's there's a a variable resistor inside of here um, because this is, allows this here, and then just a switch. Um, I'm gonna guess that that's all that this is. I'm still gonna take it apart because I might as well. It's it's already broken. It just popped right apart. It's not too hard. Yeah, that's all it is. So, inside of this is just literally like four wires. Um, you can see this is just a variable uh, resistor or a um, a potentiometer is essentially what it's called. Um, it's just something you can just turn. Um, you got a uh, the switch here. The switch controls your uh, your microphone um yeah that's it that's all that is um it looks like there's i can't really tell if there's there's it looks like a diode moving inside there i can't really tell what that is let's pull it apart a little bit more again i'm not gonna be able to do anything with this anyway i'm curious as to what's inside the razors what justifies the ridiculous price tag that they've got on these things? Um, aha, there we go. So we're gonna pull this off. Uh, it looks like this is just plastic here. Yeah, it looks like it's just held in with plastic there. Off. The next, so we got two pieces of plastic. I'm gonna pop this a little bit. A 
one. I think there's only the two things holding it inside of here. Might be super glue on the back side though. I don't see it. Two. Let's try to get underneath the board here. This little PCB. There we go. Got it. All right. Yeah, that's it. So in 2019, we got the yellow wire is here. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. You can actually see how it was all wired together. So you got speaker plus, speaker, and you got left. Um, yeah. Microphone input here. Speaker left, speaker right, speaker negative. Yep, that's all it is. This is the exact same wiring. Um, so, I mean, this is this is pretty much the common uh, the common way this is all wired up. Again, this is just a, a simple potentiometer, so it just uh, like changes the resistance that comes through. And I'm gonna guess it's probably the resistance of the um, the resistance through the ground. Um, so the speaker minus, um, since that controls both of them at the same rate, I, I would assume that unless it's got two potentiometers underneath here, but I, I don't think they're going to do that. I would think that they would simplify it a little bit more than that. Hi, gorgeous. How are you? Yeah. You can hear the uh, headphones, can't you? Mm -hmm. They're repaired. Um, the oh, surgery was successful. I thought you needed the four ones. What's that? I thought you needed the four ones. I did. I I bought the four ones. Oh, yeah, it took literally less than a day. So I I did the last night. I was like, get them tomorrow. More than capable of getting our cousins to sleep for love. Oh, I know. All right. Mm. That's actually pretty interesting. So that's pretty cool. So that's what's inside of this one. Again, if you ever wanted to, I had to repair one of these as well. They all kind of, the Razor Krakens, they're exactly the same. Um, runs the same wiring. It just looks like it's a different coloring scheme, um, which is pretty much what I would expect from most of these like brands and stuff. They really are just the same, just with different colors. Um, they should all kind of essentially do the same thing. Um, let's make sure you're you're cautious with it. Um, get a good soldering iron if you're ever going to try that. Um, you know, I mean, and you know, mess with it. Don't, don't be afraid of it. It's, it's kind of the fun thing here is that again, like my stuff was already broken. So it didn't really, it didn't really matter what I did with it. If I break it further, it, it whatever, like it's mine and it's damaged. It doesn't really matter at that point. But, um, so never be afraid. Like, um, unless you've got like a warranty on it and then you're going to de destroy your warranty. But, um, if you don't have a warranty on something and everything, you can always, 
And this is the thing, you can always repair stuff, um, especially like a little electronics. A lot of people don't think about it. Um, and a lot of companies are really bad about that anymore because they like to make it so that you're just going to come back and buy and buy and buy and buy and buy. Because if you fuck it up, you know, you got to buy another one. You got to buy another one. You know, they make money that way. Um, the thing is, is that like you don't necessarily always have to fall into that that cycle um, repairing is really not super difficult um, most of these things especially like headphones and stuff those are all um, USB wires all of that is all just just little pieces little connections um, if you know where you're gonna connect it you can pretty much put it back together and burn myself a little bit which you know whatever it happens you're gonna do that as well if you play around with uh, hot stuff eventually it's going to burn you um, I'll be ready for that I guess um, that's not that big of a deal. Just make sure you got water. Um, if you get anything worse than like a minor burn and stuff, go to the hospital, but otherwise you're probably fine. Um, I'm also not a doctor, so please don't use my advice. Um, I'm an engineer. I'm not a doctor. Um, I, I work on, on electronics and I'm not very good with humans. Um, they're a completely different set of wiring. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, I appreciate, uh, appreciate first of all, uh, to Hydro P111, just because, uh, hey, you, you know, came in and said hi and everything. I, I really do appreciate you coming about and taking a look, um, at what I'm up to in here. Um, I don't know if he stuck around or not. If you did, that's awesome. If not, that's awesome too. Um, but either way. Uh, yeah, don't be afraid of it. And, uh, I'm going to do a, a couple more of these, I think. I'm going to keep doing some of these. Um, I'm going to keep, uh, just like either repairing or engineering or building some stuff. I've got a whole lot of cool little things, and cool little projects I wanted to try. Um, one, one thing I've been meaning to mess with, I've got, I've got like Arduinos. So I got my Uno R3 here, um, that I want to mess with. I've, I've wired up some pretty neat little pieces here. Um, this was actually a, uh, a temperature sensing and, uh, this is actually a temperature sensing and like distance sensing piece. So it actually used a, uh, where'd it go? Um, it uses this little like ultrasonic, um, piece here to actually like detect how far something is. Um, so it just took like a little bit of code, a little bit of work and stuff, but those are a lot of fun to mess with. Um, so I'd like to kind of keep doing that. Um, actually getting this to work was probably the, the most pain in the ass part of it because you have to actually ground out a specific pin inside here or else if the pin isn't grounded properly, it causes all kinds of weird problems. Um, which I actually figured out that it wasn't even, so that it was just because I didn't set the ground properly. I didn't put the, the ground pin at a low enough voltage. So it was my own fault anyway, but, um, I got a bunch of little things that I've been kind of working with and stuff. I've, I've got some cool stuff that I want to mess with. Um, this is actually a, uh, this is actually the internal circuitry of a, uh, a controller board and stuff. So it's just like a, like an Xbox controller is all that actually is. Um, you know, things I, I mess with and things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to stick, I'm going to have, or do a little bit more of this, especially over the summer. Um, just kind of have some fun. I've got a lot of, I got a lot less of a workload, like a class load over the summer. So I'd like to actually kind of keep working with it and keep doing some cool stuff. Got some neat, uh, some neat pieces I wanted to mess with. Um, another thing I wanted to show off which is uh, these Circuit Playground Expresses, um, which actually run MicroPython. So um, the cool thing is, is I can actually work with Python with that. Um, this is probably my favorite language as far as uh, programming is concerned. Um, just because the, uh, like, Arduino's utilize C, or C++, um, you know, that can be a little bit of a pain. Um, just, I'm not a huge fan of C anyway. Um, so if I can avoid it, I try to, um, even though it's, it's still, I mean, it's a valid language and I got to do advanced programming in it still, but whatever, we'll, we'll that. um, but microphathon is kind of the way things are going, um, as far as like microcontrollers and stuff are concerned. So I'm um, working with microcontrollers and stuff is kind of going to be on the list as well. So, um, but if there's anything you want to see repaired, um, you know, uh, shoot me a message and stuff on here on the YouTube and stuff. Um, uh, there's there's ways to get a hold of me. You can shoot me a message on anything on Discord. I'm the Orchid, so um, if you find me on there, um, I think it's eighty nine thirty six. 
um, an orchid with a zero. So if there's anything you wanted to ever see uh, fixed, repaired, or looked at and stuff, I can. I would, I'm cool with taking stuff apart and kind of figuring it out. But take care. Have a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll see people later.